This is the King Ripper, the west coast of Tasmania, on the great Australian detour. And we, oh, 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 a long way off the highway. Woo. I used to think the romance of the open road was the stuff of legend. Another time and most certainly another place. We know better. The open road's still there, just off the freeway, connecting families to towns and stories and what will become some of our fondest memories. Subaru's Great Australian Detour is a celebration of the long way, of looking at the drive as the destination and seeing just how much we can do as we travel from A to B instead of racing and missing the best bits. This is Australia, the greatest detour there is. This time we're taking some of our favourite Subarus on some of the best drives in Australia, like the west coast of Tassie in the BRZ Coupe S. What a time and what an adventure that was. There's the Great Ocean Road in the outback, the Alpine Way in the Rex, the Flinders Ranges on the edge of the Outback Inn, what else, an Outback. And we went west in the all new Subaru Solterra. It's so ironic that on this great Australian detour, there's no main road to miss between Hobart and Queenstown, which is where we're headed. Not that it matters. In fact, this is where Tassie really gets it right. As flowers are to romance, or St Andrews is to golf, the road to Queenstown is to driving what Tasmania is to heritage-listed wilderness. Very close to perfect. Flips and flops, lefts and rights, the road follows an old walking trail, and that may well be the secret of the road's great design. Apart from the staggering scenery, there's not much humanity on the way, so keep an eye out. Hello, Linda. Bye, Linda. That was quick. One secret to the long way is local knowledge. Peanut's captain is Pete. So, Pete, yep. you're local. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Um, what can you tell me about the 99 Bend? Well, back in the day, there used to be the old original road. There was, uh, it was a lot narrower than this. Horse and carts used to go down, and I got pictures of it. And there was 99 bends, and then yeah. uh, in the 1980s, I think it was, they put the new road in, and because they just they cut a lot of corners out that were originally. So there. it's not 99 bends. It's 52. Now it's 52 bends. Counted them several times, but but it's still 99 bends. They still call it 99 bends because it's a tradition. Yeah. A lot of the motorcyclists love it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, 99 bends are fantastic. If Pirate Pete rates it, and he's local, this should be better than expected. I've been looking forward to this, Queenstown. At one point, the richest mining town in the world. And to get there, you go down the Gormie Hill and the 99 Bends. Now, I know there's 52 Bends, but it's called the 99 Bends, and it is one of the great highlight roads you can drive. My daughter did it recently with a friend in a van. She said it was like driving a loaf of bread. Such fun. We're not in that. We're in this. This is a classic rear-wheel drive sports car layout. It has the ultra-low centre of gravity and it's a uh, six-speed manual. So we've got push to start. Oh, that is the 2.4-litre horizontally opposed boxer four-cylinder engine. That's a satisfying growl. OK, let's go. Been looking forward to this. There's an eight inch touch screen. I won't be looking at that because I'm looking forward, keeping my eyes directly on the road. Sometimes I'll look in the rear vision to watch the road disappear at the back, but generally I'm looking forward. This is a dream drive. Oh, kangaroo! <laughs> Just kidding. The gateway to Tassie's west coast 
Queenstown's home to about 1,700 people, a rich pioneering and mining history, a cinema, a few pubs, and a museum sharing the past with the present. While Queenstown's still a mining town, it's morphing into a full-blown adventure tourism destination. Hiking, mountain biking, and the best way to see the famous hue and pine, rafting. Been so spoiled in the BIZ, I now get to ride in a loaf of bread. We're going rafting. The rafting experience is fully immersive. So this is the King River, right? And this is as good as a Tasmanian river can be. And then amazingly you come up here and this is the Queen River, that's right, Ollie? And you'll see the color change and that's the remnants of mining from 30 years ago, but it's getting better. The vegetation's almost Jurassic in scale. The gorges, gorgeous. And the hero, of course, are the rapids. Is too much fun enough? Hardly. There's more after this on the historic Great Ocean Road. Well off the beaten track, you'll find the Great Ocean Road. This road, this historic monument, takes you along the Southern Ocean, riding huge limestone cliffs, past beaches to surf, through rainforest and pastoral land, beside a dormant volcano, and there's even a food trail. The Great Ocean Road is a living history, a place for stories to be heard and memories to be made. Here it is the beginning of the Great Ocean Road. Technically, it begins a little bit further east in Torquay, but this is the spiritual beginning. It's over 240 k's of heritage listed road. It should take really, what, four hours to drive that far? But it's gonna take us a bit longer than that. There's a stack to see. Think of the Great Ocean Road as the sea change of driving holidays. Arguably Victoria's best coastline, this is the best road south of the Yarra. We're gonna start in Lawn, generally under two hours from Melbourne, depending on the wrestle down the Geelong Road. To fully appreciate the Great Ocean Road, it helps to know how it came to be. Peter, the Great Ocean Road really is one of the great coastal roads of the world, isn't it? It is one of the great coastal roads of the world, uh, not only in terms of the feat of construction, but as a destination and as a visual monument, it attracts more people than both the Great Barrier Reef and, and Uluru together. And Heritage Listed, so this must be one of the only, is it the only Heritage Listed road? To my knowledge, okay. it is the only Heritage Listed road. And it signifies its importance, mainly to the method of construction, the fact that it was largely returned servicemen from World War I that were engaged in construction. And in fact, the road itself is the longest war memorial in the world. So, and that's what a lot of people don't realise, isn't it? That it's, you know, it's 240 k's of, of war memorial. Exactly. That's exactly right, Andrew. How significant is the road as an engineering feat, given it was made by man and muscle and shovel? When, when you drive round the steep cliff areas of the road and think of the workers, the servicemen being lowered over the top of the ridge on a rope and having to cut their footholds with pick and shovel yeah. and then gradually dig the road into the cliff face, um, you wouldn't get away with it today. So when you're doing that beautiful drive, it's worth remembering, it's, it's actually a lot more than a road. Absolutely. And where it takes you will fill your eyes and then maybe even your stomach. Polo Bay is your genuine seaside village. Your food options, pizzeria, there's burgers, uh, sushi, but I do know there's a fish co-op, which means fresh, fresh fish and possibly lobster fresh off the boat. So we should genuinely try and get one of those. Is that my ship coming in? I know, it's a trawler, but you get the idea. Trev, how long were you out for? Only two days this time. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow. Hey, Trevor, when you're when you're out there fishing, you know, like you stay one night or three or four, do you eat them out there? Is that what you eat? Oh, once a year? You're kidding. Maybe twice at so the most. So what do you have when what do you have when you're out there? Lamb racks, 
pork ribs. Do you? <laughs> you seriously, you seriously I don't knew eat it. them? I knew it. You don't eat them? <laughs> Not out there, no. What no, about no, the very... octopus? Oh, I love octopus at the restaurant. Yeah, right. I don't eat it out there. Right. I just give a bloke a couple the other day and he give me a couple of jars of pickled stuff back. Yeah. That's the way I like to do it. That's the economy. I'm working it out now. All right, good on you, mate. Thanks a lot. Not that I didn't try with cold, hard cash, which clearly wasn't enough. Pickled stuff. I'll come back with pickled stuff. Cucumbers. Onions. There is a rumour that off-the-boat sales are coming back, so maybe next time. As you'd expect with Australia's most iconic coastal road, there's lots to see, and that's where Subaru's EyeSight Driver Assist really kicks in because you can use things like adaptive cruise control, which is brilliant. So it basically works like this. I turn on cruise control, I lock onto the car in front, and then I can set my distance from that car, so either close or further away. If they slow down, I slow down. It's brilliant, and it's really safe and gives me a chance to actually enjoy what I'm seeing. The Great Ocean Road is clearly stunning. 70 metre limestone cliffs line the shore and whilst known as the 12 Apostles, only eight remain of the original nine. I know, it's a long story from the 1960s. I'll bet this place is many things to many people. Home to a million proposals and wedding photographs, family snaps and picnics, the stories that have happened here. And it is the shipwreck coast. There were over 200 of them. There's a feast of stories right there. And the yarns continue after the break as we head northwest to the Flinders Ranges. This is a driving holiday in its purest sense. There are good miles between sites and good opportunities to challenge yourself both spiritually and physically. So you're out here in the Flinders Ranges and you see that dirt road, turn off, the lookout, pugilist hill, and you think, should I? Well, yeah, you should. And in the Subaru Outback, you've got symmetrical all-wheel drive. You've got three different versions of X mode to drive in. So it's snow and dirt, there's normal, and there's deep snow and mud. And then the third part of the combination is ground clearance, which means put those three together and you can pretty well go over every cattle grid and other things you want to. Brilliant. Get to where you're going. If you googly Flinders Ranges images, you will see a road. A winding dirt road across a mountain range. It's called the Razorback. Is it fun? What do you reckon? And it's a necessary challenge to deliver you to one of the Southern Flinders Ranges highlights. Oh, you can take the bitumen, but why would you? In fact, the whole drive to the Brackner Gorge, snaking its way along or in a riverbed, feels entirely Jurassic. Back to fault lines for a second, but that is one of the rarest fault lines in the world because it's so straight. And one of the things, one of the constants about the Flinders Ranges is how much it surprises people and so often. So before Christmas, a river ran through here six metres high. Uh, two years ago, there was snow here to six inches. So whilst it looks like it would be like this forever, it's constantly changing. Relentlessly beautiful. The Alpine Way is a different kind of beauty, and so is the Rex. How best to describe this car, the WRX Sports Wagon? Well, it's exactly nothing like the 1984 Sports Wagon I drove across Australia with my mate Visa. That was in the late 80s. It's not meant to be. It's, look, it's definitely a nod to history and the generations that have come before of brilliant WRXs may be described as a fusion of sublime sedan performance and sports wagon flexibility offered exclusively with the Subaru Performance Transmission. But what does that mean in English, Andrew? It's more fun, more engaging. Look, there's an upgraded, more aggressive shift logic with a quicker and smarter response 
to what the driver's doing. Approximately 30% faster upshifts and 50% faster downshifts compared to the last model. As in, and I promise this, as much fun as you can imagine. Oh, I've really been looking forward to this part of the Great Alpine Road. Honestly, so I can use the paddles and really engage the Subaru performance transmission. So just, you know, just feel like I'm something I never get to be during the week. Well, as the saying goes, you don't know what you don't know. And I feel a bit silly for not knowing about this. It's just stunning. Mount Blowhard there, Mount Higginbotham, Hotham, and this road. I didn't think we'd find anything that would match Tasmania and that west coast, but this is amazing. This on this, it's just, it's driving. In this festival of adventure, I needed one last chance to wear a helmet. So I'm going paragliding with Fred up above Bright to see the great Alpine Way from another perspective. How far off road can we get? This is the great Australian detour. Once we touch down, we head west to Western Australia in the all new Subaru Solterra, the all electric SUV. Australia's biggest state is Western Australia. It's beautiful and there's a lot of everything. A lot of beautiful coast, a lot of beautiful desert and a lot of road to enjoy the all new Subaru Solterra, which is beautiful. The all electric SUV. This one is an overseas pre-production model. It's close to what we'll get here, but not exact. If the people of Margaret River were worried about their part of the world getting overexposed, the people of Esperance, look out. Now this is, I think it's the most beautiful place I've been, and about half an hour out of Esperance is Lucky Bay, and oh my goodness. Whitehaven, Hyams Beach, whitest sand in the world. You're kidding. This is stunning. So this is Lucky Bay. Why Lucky Bay? Well, Matthew Flinders came here at the turn of the century. That's the 1800s. There'd been a huge storm. He found shelter in here. There's a lot of islands. So he got in here and went, wow, lucky that this is here. And I think it's lucky that, well, look, beautiful squeaky sand, beautiful white beaches and the water superb. And that's our third ocean, Pacific, Indian, now the Southern Ocean. So of course we must swim. So very hard to leave, but so very much to look forward to. The Royal and Ancient Norseman Golf Club. It's two hours and a turn off up Highway 1. So this is a, high, a genuine highlight of our trip. It's the Nullarbor Golf Course. It's the longest golf course in the world, 1,365 kilometers. It actually begins in Kalgoorlie, but Kalgoorlie, is two hours north and we're like emus we're going forwards not backwards so i've given myself a par on those holes bought my good clubs i'm here to win the nullarbor is to driving what a marathon might be to a runner it's long it's challenging and hopefully incredibly rewarding i'm not really sure how i feel about this 146.6 kilometers of straight road or 146.6 kilometers of straight road? Yes, sir. Let's get to it. White line, white line, white line, white line, white line, white line, white line. More of a bend than a turn, but definitely a chance to rotate the steering wheel. Let's call a spade a spade, shall we? The Nullarbor is straight. It's straight and long and it's easy to lose concentration. And it's actually a, a safety issue. So what I really like about the Solterra 
It's got cruise control and adaptive cruise control, and I'll always choose adaptive cruise control. So I set the speed, you know, 105, 108, drive along. If someone's in front of me and they're driving slower, Solitaire can lock onto that car, recognize it, and then it can get to a certain distance, but not too close. And I set that distance. Then that lets me just chill on the drive, give me time to think about what I'm doing. I might attack my next golf hole. I know I'm going to arrive at that golf hole refreshed, ready, not thinking about, why is that guy in front going so slow and what will I do about it? I do nothing. Car does it for me. If only the Solterra could hit a golf ball. It would make a sweet buggy though. So this is the border hole of the Nullarbor Golf Link. And it's literally halfway between Adelaide and Perth. And I'll admit I'm a bit confused about a couple of things. I thought the whole thing was the Nullarbor, but the Nullarbor National Park starts just here, yet the Nullarbor starts in Norseman and ends a bit further along. Got time to think about all this stuff, obviously. Now, this is a 160 metre, par three. I'm well down. Well, that's okay. Oi. The course is working its magic with fun detours. It's amazing how fast the long road goes. Some of our best drives from the Great Australian Detour in some of our favourite Subarus. It feels like we saw so much and yet, I know there's still so much more to show you. If there's one thing that's pretty obvious, it's that the destination is only half the story. The rest is the getting there, the people, the side roads, the detours. Australia, that's where the magic is.